The special thing about science is that it's not just a body of knowledge. It's a way of thinking, a way of skeptically interrogating the universe with a fine understanding of human fallibility. Didn't Carl Sagan say that? Why, yes he did, Arya. But I made it sound like I actually said that because today we're talking about scientific fraud. While science at its best is finely calibrated to take into account human failings, scientists can be corrupted by fame and fortune in their field just like anyone else. Scientific fraud is why millions of people believe vaccines are actually harmful and why Amanda Seyfried was doing a weird voice on Hulu. Today we are talking about a man who up until very recently was the face of scientific misconduct. And we're going to learn some statistics as we do so. I was told there would be no math. Why are you worried about you're a supercomputer? You are math. Lock it in, Aria. Math time. Now entering the facility. This is Yoshitaka Fuji, formerly a professor of anesthesiology at Toho University. Over his long career, he published hundreds of papers looking into medicines that helped alleviate symptoms like nausea and vomiting after surgery. And in these papers, he uncovered quite a lot. Or did he? Fuji was prolific in his field, publishing an average of eight papers per year. Not necessarily a damning number, but one of the checks and balances of science is to be skeptical of any number that seems too good to be true. And so, 60 years ago in the year 2000, some of Fuji's peers published this letter to the editor of the journal Anesthesia and Analgesia. It claimed that Fuji's vast amount of data seemed, quote, incredibly nice, which is science speak for bullshit. Their problem with Fuji was that in many of the papers they looked at, Side effects of medication that should be random, like headaches, were occurring at exactly the same rates. This, Fuji's peers calculated, is extremely unlikely. <coughs> In fact, the probability of headaches occurring at exactly the same rate across many randomized controlled trials was something like less than a millionth of one percent. The journal ended up giving Fuji the benefit of the doubt here and even published his response to this critique, which was, quote, how much evidence is required to provide adequate proof? Which is, of course, science speak for... The journal would end up publishing 11 more of Fuji's papers. That's bull****. By 2011, Yoshitaka Fuji had over 200 scientific papers to his name, but his colleagues never stopped being skeptical. So the journal Anesthesia published another editorial using Fuji as a possible example of fraud. And one scientist, Data Chad and fellow anesthetist John Carlyle, responded. He said he could prove that Fuji was a fake. The journal responded and effectively told him to put his data where his mouth was. Science speak for this. And so that's exactly what John did. Now, Dr. John Carlyle wasn't an expert in statistics at the time, but what he would go on to do with just simple statistical ideas would make Fuji the face of scientific misconduct. Just like you're one of the faces of Twilight. How'd you get that photo? I'm not in those movies. You can't prove that I was in those movies. You can't stop me at a Comic-Con and insist that I was in those movies and ask for my autograph. I, I gotta do some damage control, I'll be right back. Today's episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Hey there gamers, I'm award-winning science educator and professional nerd, Kyle Hill. It's easy to get overwhelmed in today's confusing world. That's why I'm a huge advocate for controlling what you can actually control. All this monkey junk up here. Get help that is better. BetterHelp. BetterHelp is professional counseling done with a licensed professional therapist online. After the service assesses your needs, get matched for weekly phone or video sessions with one of over 30,000 expert therapists. Log on to your account anytime to send them messages and change your counselor at any time for free. Don't sit in a waiting room. Don't get stuck with the only therapist in your area. Don't pay any more than you have to because there's access to financial aid. If there's something in the way of achieving all your brain goals, try going to betterhelp.com slash Kyle Hill for 10% off your first month. Month. Over 4 million people have already tried this and found some solace in their neuronal thunderstorm. Mental health is health. Try health that is better. Better health. The central limit theorem in probability states that if you take a large enough sample of independent and identically distributed variables, the average of those samples will tend towards a normal distribution or what most people know as a bell curve. 
In the late 1800s, Sir Francis Galton was so taken with this idea that he developed this the Galton board. It takes, this one takes 6,000 identical and independent steel beads and throws them down a distributed set of hexagonal pegs. Now, you'd expect with a 50-50 chance of going one way or the other at each hexagonal peg that all these beads would lead up to some chaotic result. But does it? No. Every time the beads stop falling, a normal distribution appears. Another way to think about this that we don't have time to get into is entropy. The bell curve here actually represents the maximum amount of informational loss from the bead's initial configuration. These ideas bring us back to Yoshitaka Fuji. When Dr. John Carlyle was challenged to show that Dr. Fuji's data was faked, he used these simple statistical concepts. Was Fuji's data which should have been taken from independent, random people sampled identically, fitting a normal distribution, like we know many human variables do, or was it all too nice? Carlyle began with 168 of Fuji's randomized controlled trials. What he found was pretty striking from a statistical perspective. Here's an analysis for just one of Fuji's variables. On the left is the expected normal distribution for that variable, and on the right is Fuji's distribution. Look at how many data points cluster curiously around the mean, or the average. And look at how few are on the expected margins. Carlyle found this discrepancy between what should be normal and what Fuji found again and again and again and again oh, uh, and again. All in all, Carlyle calculated in his paper that the chances Fuji's work had truly representative data in it was somewhere between 1 in 25 and 1 in 1 million billion billion billion. That's bull****! Within weeks of these findings being published, a committee of Japanese anesthetists conducted their own investigation and found that out of 212 of Fuji's papers, just three were valid. <laughs> As of 2023, a total of 173 of Fuji's papers have been retracted from scientific journals. This was the most by a single person ever until the July of 2023 when another anesthesiologist, for whatever reason, vaulted past Fuji with 184 retracted papers. These stories just underscore Sagan's point that we started with today. To work properly, to understand the universe correctly, science not only needs to understand variables and physics and math, it needs to understand the humans that are doing that science and put in place checks and balances to account for our all too human fallibility. Otherwise, you're not going to add to a progressive body of knowledge as a scientist. You're just gonna be creating bullshit. Until next time. Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. If you want to join the facility, if you want to drape on a silky white lab coat, a wig that looks like my hair, get videos early, get access to our private Discord, get private live streams with me every single month, oh, you can go to patreon.com slash kylehill and get access to the facility today. And hey, if you support us just enough, you get your name on Aria here in every single video. Oh, so how lucky you. As you can see, there's already hundreds and hundreds of these, so I don't know how I'm gonna pass the time as all of these names. Why did they do it? Why did Fuji fake so many papers, the vast majority of his papers and his data? Well, I don't think we have to go all that far. While he wasn't driving around in Lamborghinis and fleecing crypto bros out of all of their little pictures and getting billions of dollars like some guy with broccoli hair did, you can still get some sense of worth and, 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 and fame from just being a prolific scientist in your field. I know that I would feel very good if I had hundreds of papers to my name and I was ostensibly adding to the body of knowledge. And I, I guess that's enough of an incentive to fudge your data, fudge the numbers, fabricate stuff wholesale. It's not pretty and it doesn't, it doesn't feel right when we're talking about scientists doing that, but hey, we're human.
<laughs> Thanks for watching. I came from the other side.